It looks like you've been in custody for a while. Since three o'clock this morning, I'm down here trying to Hello. Hi, Bradley. It's Elder here at the Aboriginal Legal Service. How are you holding up? Yeah, yeah all right, yeah. Did you hear what happened with him? No. Oh, okay, he's, been, he's taken heroin today when he was shoplifting. So they narcanned him, came back to the police station, started to go on the knot again. And there was a field interview for an unlawful assault. Do you understand why you're at the police station? No, I don't know nothing about it, so now I'm just getting done for it again. Can I just ask what he was picked up for? Uh, theft of motor vehicle. So he's been bailed to when, sorry? Uh, to the 8th of February. 8th of February at Melbourne Match? And yeah. uh, no, Ringwood. Ringwood. No worries, thank you. Yeah, too easy. All right, have a good night. We get all kind of calls from people who are just scared. Every time an Indigenous person is arrested and go through the system in the police stations, we're notified, so it all comes through to me and I'm on from you know 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. and that 12 hours I'm responsible for checking on the welfare of these people. It's a big responsibility when you think about it because if there's something goes wrong while that person's in custody you know if they have a medical issue or you know the worst case scenario is they die in custody that will fall back on me as a CSO because I'm the person responsible to call and check on their welfare. Are you looking for a career, not for just a job? Then why not accept the challenge and join the Victoria Police? Information on becoming a police officer... I actually think about becoming a police officer. <laughs> it's Elva here at the Aboriginal Legal Service. I can't find the sergeant, he's missing at the moment, but, um, and the members are interviewing another one of their offenders, so I can't even speak to No, them. that's okay, I'll, I'll ring you back a bit later. We get that a lot too, like why... Why does there have to be a service for Aboriginal people specifically? And, the, and it's the facts. The facts are that Aboriginal people are, you know, overrepresented in the justice system. Hi, Michelle. It's Elva here from the Aboriginal Legal Service. How are you going? Good. How are you? Oh, yeah, not too bad. <laughs> you sound so happy. Oh, a bit busy. It's busy, but it's not too bad. I think, I think they're in an interview. Give me two secs, all right? No worries. Are you looking for a career? Are you there? Yeah, yeah. They're in at the moment. Can I get them to buzz you back after they're finished? No worries. Thanks. Bye. The problem with that is that if they're interviewing them straight away, we're not, then they don't have access to legal advice before their interview. And that's a problem. Do you understand why you're at the police station? Uh, yeah, fair, yeah. Yeah? Do you have any family members you want me to contact? Yeah, probably my nan. Also, did you want some legal advice regards to your interview? Um, yeah, that'd be great, yeah. All right. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put you through to... I've been able to get in contact with anyone, like, even the man that I'm here. Right. <laughs> so have you used or anything today? Are you under the influence of anything at the moment? Huh. Okay. So you're having withdrawals or anything else? Yeah, last time I used was two days ago. Okay, so it's been a few days. Oh, okay, so he's sobered up? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Did he want to speak with us at all, do you know? Um, he's not fit for interview at the moment because apparently he's too drunk, so he's been lost. Uh, no worries, we'll call back in about four hours to see how he's going. Okay. We have a pretty good system. Our workers are really good with each other. We have a good relationship, so if, if I'm very stressed or I have something going on, I can always call Gary, who's also senior worker and he doesn't sleep. So the three of us that work full time, we don't really sleep that much. Then why not accept the challenge and join the Victoria Police? Maybe obtain... I'm um, just calling. I wanted to check on a client of ours. He was brought in um, for crim damage, but I think he was a bit drunk. He was, and he's getting there. He's still in the cells at the moment to be interviewed shortly. All right, then I'll call back a bit later on. It's huge. It's a huge job. Um, 
because Victoria is pretty huge, but also Tasmania as well, which we've only just taken on in the last couple of months. There's just one worker and a solicitor who are on call, you know, for 12 hours at a time. By Wednesday, Thursday, once you've been on for a few nights, you can't even recognise your own writing because you're just like a dead tired. It's not just a job, like they say on the police um, messages. It's, um, you have to have the passion for your own people, I suppose, yeah. No, no, he's been released. He got released uh, about court to 12. Yeah, what was the outcome? Um, was it just on... T- it'll just be pending summons. He's left. Awesome. And he didn't get a ticket for drunk, so that's awesome. Crying. Yeah. Mm. Are you okay? You're just not. No, not really, man. Yeah. Not really, man. Oh, darn. Okay. So, do you know why you're there tonight? Uh, yeah. I said that I had counterfeit money or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, man. I feel like I'm. You're just over know, it. I don't know anymore. Yeah, I just don't know, man. What was going to happen with her tonight? Um, at the moment, she's um, sort of a bit unstable. We're, we're getting a, our forensic medical officer to come out and assess her to see if she's fit for interview. Oh, can I have a chat to her just because um, I'm... Well, she's probably not able to speak at the moment. She's been um, quite violent in the cells at the moment, so we're just going to check on her. Do you think she's at risk of suicide or...? No, she hasn't expressed any suicidal uh, thoughts to me. She's screaming a fair bit. And banging on the cell door a little bit so she's she's in there at the moment to, so that we can monitor her more closely. Hey, I'm just calling you, um, giving you a courtesy call regarding Melissa. Yeah. Just letting you know that she's currently at the police station and she's been arrested. So, um, are they going to let her out or...? They're going to interview her, so once she's been interviewed, I'll give you a call back and let you know what's happening. Yeah. Okay, Dal. All right, I'll call you back a bit later. Okay, thank you for that. No problems. I had a really bad experience with police in South Australia where I went into the petrol station just to get some petrol and um, there had been a fight at that station like five minutes before with Aboriginal people and the police showed up and they had said all you black people need to get out and I said what are you talking about I've just showed up to pay for petrol but because I was black I was immediately associated with everyone else that was there and was ordered to get out and if I didn't leave I was going to be arrested and I'd worked as a field officer at that time so I said I want your name your badge number and it wasn't until the next day that it was like my brother I think I was shocked because he just walked out with his head down and I, that's my older brother. So I was like, are you serious? Like, you just accepted that. So yeah, that kind of led me to think, well, I'd rather work in with my own people, make sure that doesn't happen. Because I think that too often people think that's the way it is and they accept it and it shouldn't be accepted. You're okay at the moment? Yeah, do you got mum and dad coming down or someone to come down? You don't know? All right. Um, what I'll do is call back a bit later and see how you're getting on. She was like, yeah, no, I'm fine. If I was on the police station, I'd be like crying my, my eyes out, but she's like, no, nah, I'm fine. Oh my gosh, she's only 14. But it's, sadly though, that's like not the first time kids been picked up. I think like the youngest one was 10 and he was on ice as well. So yeah, that was like awful. For Aboriginal people, it's the history there too. Um, back in the day, being being held by police could only mean about something really bad. And I couldn't speak for everyone, but I know that they're, it's usually they're afraid to be locked up by police because it's a scary thing. And it's, yeah, just um, that's probably one of the biggest issues that most of our clients have, just being scared that they're there. in in custody. If you ask people our age, and we're like not even 30 yet, if we've had racist experiences with police, nine times out of 10, we'll say, yes, we have. Is she Aboriginal? Yeah, well, she's popped up on our systems. I didn't think she 
she was Aboriginal. Mm. Um, I don't think she is somehow. Um, Did you want to check with her or? She's here and <laughs> she's here for a safe custody warrant. Yeah, yeah. That's all and DHS are um, assessing her but I'm not sure that she's Aboriginal. Yeah, maybe um, ask her and when we call back we might see if she, yeah, see what yeah. she says. All right, I'll, uh, oh. I'll see. I've had people say, how much Aboriginal are you? And I find that offensive because I wouldn't ask that person, how white are you? They wrote about my father, they said he's a half caste, so, you know, he can integrate with the white society and he was taken by police and he was placed in a really bad, you know, home for boys and he had a lot of bad stuff happen. On my mum's side, um, her parents were both taken as well. So they were all taken by police and their trust of the police is very, uh, limited. So yeah, all of my brothers and sisters ended up like working with, alongside police, which is like dad's worst nightmare. It's like, oh, my kids work with police and he said, I'll never pass that on. That's my life, not yours. So he's pretty cool. We still have a long way to go in terms of building a relationship with police. Our people feel more protected here because their services and they know that there's someone that's going to call. They know our lawyers are going to chase them up and they know that if they don't answer their phone that we will go to their house and see if they're home. They know that. But it's all about making people feel safe. And I think that police recognise that that's an issue too with our people. And that's the first step is recognising that, yeah, there is a history there and we need to start repairing it. And yeah, I'm all for that. So I'm just going to go back to sleep until 5 o'clock, probably get up, have something to eat like breakfast and then sleep again until about 8 o'clock, start all over again. And then the guys will take over during the day and so they'll be, they'll be pretty busy. Hi Bree, it's Elva here at the Victorian Aboriginal Legal Service, how are you? Good, how are you? <laughs> Getting there. He's gone, is he? Yep. Um, we just set him a new court date and sent him on his way. No problems. Thank you very much. Okay, see ya. Bye.